In this lecture, you'll learn about the NetApp storage architecture. And I mean the software rather than the hardware architecture. So how the different things in the ONTAP software, such as the aggregates and the volumes, relate to each other. Okay, let's get into it. The first thing that we have down at the bottom is our disks, our physical hard drives. The drives are organized into aggregates. So an aggregate is just a collection of physical drives. One of the attributes on an aggregate is a RAID group. So say that we've got an aggregate with 40 disks in there, how many of those disks are going to be storing data and how many are going to be used as parity drives. So that's your RAID group on your aggregate. Now, the RAID group is an attribute of the aggregate. What I mean by that is if you were in the system manager GUI, you'll see there's a page there for your disks and you can see all of the different individual disks in the system. There's also a page for your aggregates as well. And you can see what aggregates you've got and how they've been configured. There's not, however, a page for RAID groups. The reason for that is that the RAID group is an attribute of the aggregate. So if you go to the aggregate page in System Manager, you'll see your aggregates there, and you'll see how the RAID groups are configured on the aggregate. The next thing we have moving up is the volume. The volume is the lowest level that clients can access their data at, and the volume goes into an aggregate. So with your aggregate, you could have a single volume in that aggregate, or you could have multiple volumes in the same aggregate. And again, it's the lowest level that clients can access their data at. So clients can access their data at the volume level, not at the aggregate level. The next thing we have is an optional component. That is our queue trees. The Q stands for quotas, because queue trees are most commonly used for configuring quotas. They can be used for some other things as well that we'll talk about when we do the Q3s lecture. But for now, just know that the main reason for configuring a Q-tree is if you want to configure a quota. Q-trees are optional and Q-trees go into your volumes. Say if you had a Windows client that had mapped a drive to a volume. If you have got a Q-tree in there, then the Q-tree will show up as a folder inside that volume. Okay, last thing that we have is our LUNs. LUN stands for logical unit number, and LUNs are specific to the SAN protocols. So if you're using a SAN protocol, you want your SAN client to connect to the storage system and use some storage, it will be connecting to a LUN. So LUNs not used for NAS, used for SAN only. LUNs can either go into a volume or they can be at the Q3 level. So looking at those components, the mandatory components, as I said earlier, the lowest level that a client can access its data at is at the volume level. Our volumes go into our aggregates and our aggregates are collections of disks. So you have to have disks, aggregates and volumes for the system to be usable. Q trees are an optional feature that go into a volume, are typically used to configure a quota. And LUNs are mandatory if you're using SAN, but they're not used at all when we're using a NAS protocol. Okay, so that was the basic architecture. I'll be covering all of those different components in much more detail individually later on in the course. I just wanted to give you the big picture here of how they all relate to each other. Moving on, another thing to talk about right here is SVMs, our storage virtual machines. SVMs are used for secure multi-tenancy in ONTAP. Another thing to tell you right now as well is that SVMs used to be known as vServers. So they were originally called vServers, and then a few versions ago, the name was changed to storage virtual machine. So vServers and SVMs are exactly the same thing. But whenever we say either one, we're talking about the same thing. If you're using the System Manager GUI, there's a page there for storage virtual machines. If you're working at the command line, they're still called vServers there. So as I said, these are used for secure multi-tenancy. 
So let's say that you've got department A and you've got department B and they both want their own separate storage system. What you would have had to do years ago back in the day is you would have to buy two separate physical storage systems, one for each department, and they would each require their own separate supporting infrastructure, the switches as well. Obviously, that would be expensive. Maybe also two teams to manage the two different systems also. With modern storage systems like with ONTAP, what you can do is you can virtualize one physical system into multiple separate logical systems. Each of those logical systems appears to be a separate storage system to the client and they're kept completely secure from each other as well. The way that that is done in ONTAP is with our SVMs, our storage virtual machines. Looking at the architecture, at the cluster level, we've got our disks and our aggregates. Your disks and aggregates are still managed at the global level. The reason for this is, let's say that we've got an SVM for department A and we've got an SVM for department B. Well, if we got disks and grouped them into aggregates for department A and we did the same for department B, and then later on down the line, we find that the aggregates for department A are getting very full, the departments for depart the aggregates for department B have still got plenty of space. But at that time, because there's dedicated aggregates for each, we would have to go and buy more disks for department A, even though there's plenty of spare disks, spare space over at department B. So that would not be a very efficient use of the actual physical capacity that we've got. So because of that, your aggregates are a pooled global resource and the storage on there can be given to any of the different SVMs. Okay, moving on from there, let's say that we've got an SVM, which is for department A. The things that are assigned at the SVM level are our volumes, and then obviously everything above there will be as well. So also our Q3s and our ones. Other things that are assigned at the SVM level is the namespace, which just means the directory structure of that SVM. Also the IP addresses, which are assigned at the logical interface level, they are dedicated to a particular SVM as well. And we can also have SVM level administrators. So there we've got department A, we could also have an SVM for department B as well. It's got its own separate volumes, Q3s and LUNs, separate namespace, separate IP addresses, and separate administrators. Again, the reason for having SVMs is for secure multi-tenancy. So if we did have a department A and a department B, and we wanted to keep them separate and secure from each other, we want to make sure that department A does not have any access to to department B's data and vice versa. So that's why the volumes are separate and dedicated at the SVM level. Also the IP addresses are separate and dedicated at the SVM level as well. So we can control the connectivity between from clients going to department A and department B. We also have the SVM level administrators as well. So if you are a department A administrator, you can configure your department A SVM but you cannot do the department B SVM. In fact, you will not even know that it's there. You can't even see that it exists. So completely separate and secure from each other. We do also have cluster-wide administrators as well. These are required if you want to create another SVM. Also, your cluster administrators can manage the cluster as a whole. Because volumes are assigned at the SVM level, and volumes are mandatory for the system to work, you're always going to have at least one data SVM. So even if you don't require any of that multi-tenancy, then you'll still have at least one data SVM for everything to work. SVMs are also not just used if you've got different departments that want their own separate storage systems. Another reason for creating separate SVMs would be maybe you want to do that for separate client access protocols. For example, maybe you've got an SVM for iSCSI and you've also got an SVM for NFS, both coming from the same department. That is optional. You could run both iSCSI and NFS in the same SVM or you could split them out into separate SVMs. It's really up to you, whichever you find easiest for management. Another place that you'll see SVMs being used is rather than separate departments in the same company, maybe it's storage that's being provided by a cloud provider and they've got separate SVMs, not for departments, but for separate customers. 
Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands on practice with NetApp Storage for free on your laptop, then you can download my free ebook, which you can see above my head right now. Also, check out my NetApp Storage Complete course, which will teach you everything you could possibly want to know about ONTAP. Thanks.